a lot of these narratives are distorted precisely through a very cunning deployment of words. Hitler was a right-winger. This is widely taught. Many people believe it. If you look up Wikipedia, Hitler's a right-winger. Right-wing in that context does not mean what we mean by right-wing. Um, the terms right and left, by the way, go back to the French Revolution. In the French Revolution, if you were for the French Revolution, you sat on the left, you were a left-winger. If you opposed the French Revolution, you sat on the right. The people who sat on the right were the party of, you could call them, throne and altar. The alliance between the church and the aristocracy or the monarchy. That is right-wingness, European style. But in America, being right-wing means we are conserving, we're conservatives, we're conserving what? The principles of the American Revolution. So we're not right-wing in that sense. In, in the European sense, Bismarck, who was essentially a welfare state socialist, is a right-winger. So this is one clever use of language that distorts. I'll give another, which is more to our topic. And I, here I'm naming, I, I love to name names here because there's no point slamming unnamed people. <coughs> um, I only like to slam named people and important people. There are some people who are n not important enough for me to slam. Um, <laughs> Eric Foner, progressive historian, the leading scholar alive on Reconstruction. So Eric Foner is extremely cunning. He knows exactly what the Republican Party did. He knows exactly what the Democratic Party did. He's written a 700-page book on Reconstruction. But when it comes to the roll call vote on the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, he goes dead silent. Right? Why? Because when it comes to the 13th Amendment, this is after the Civil War. We're voting to, f to free the slaves. 85% of the Democrats vote no. Now you think, well, yeah, that's because they're Southerners and they're really bitter. No, the Southerners couldn't vote. They weren't in the Union. It, this is only Northern Democrats, 85% of whom, whom voted against freeing blacks in the North. And then comes the 14th Amendment, granting equal rights under the law. The Democratic vote on this. I don't remember the exact number of Democratic House and Senate, but whatever it was, it was that number to zero. Every Democrat voted against the 14th Amendment. Every Democrat voted against the 15th Amendment. Foner knows this. He suppresses it. What does he do? He introduces language. He starts calling the Southerners, who are trying to revive the plantation, conservatives. So suddenly, the word conservative is now deployed to describe a southern slaveholder who wants to get his plantation back. And somehow the implication is left, although never explicitly said, that somehow Abraham Lincoln was a progressive. He was a liberal, even though Lincoln repeatedly states, I am a conservative, in those words exactly. And Lincoln, Lincoln argues, he goes, I am conserving the principles of the founders and the Republican Party in the 1850s, says Lincoln, wants nothing more than what the founders wanted in the 1780s. So this is a really good example of how the terms conservative and liberal are redeployed to invert their actual meaning. 